so good of you to join me again today. I'm a little bit depressed today. <coughs> Twice in one day, the other day, me saw us. Two incredibly beautiful young women, age 20. Good Aryan girls, Canadian girls, utterly homeless and besides themselves unknowing wherewith what to do. When it's behind it's my studio, I may have allowed them a safe place to rest and think and sleep and eat, if but for a short time, yet City Fathers and the Chamber of Commerce and the banks rather prefer such girls make it their way as best they may, which meaneth they have been laying down into the altar of Moloch. Ha ha ha! Merry bloody Christmas! <coughs> With that, we begin where we left off. And I draw this drawing to your mind. I always thought it reminded me of something Sundra might draw. But I've never quite been certain of that. There is also this, and that is a photocopy of Sandra and Maurice. Bless his soul, he died, and I told you how and why. Um, here, accompanying it, is uh, sorry chum the invitation to their wedding and as he is gone this goes to them or to her and his children as does this page here Also, Michelle Boudreaux's phone number fell out. So, there. Um, first, I noticed this. It's what's left of a collage uh, of, uh, of uh, a sonnet. I was penning for Jamie. I penned Jamie several sonnets. This though is unreadable. It seemed to be on the back of a map to Kelowna, which is uh, got those little. Uh, dragons in the water so that's good for my collage later um, there is also this so that is also collage material most important though is this and I know not which child ever gave it to me but it's precious. Also, a sketch 
Again, me knoweth not whom, I do recognize that it is my style. Well, that's nice. It looks like we're most of the way through this book. And once it's done, it's done. And I'll be happy with that. As you see here, I'm using colored markers. Uh, perhaps to uh, differentiate the times. Monday the 8th, so I know not what year. Uh, most likely 1999. Could be 1998. Most likely 1999. Driving away, 4.30 B.C. time. So long, Martin, Sandra, Reese. We're all tired, and I'm so depressed. I need a change. Time and travel. I don't like travel. I don't mind getting there, but I don't like just sitting there doing nothing in betwixt time. Kind of enjoy getting places and hanging out, but hate travel. I should travel and paint. I can paint the people I meet, the places I go, things I do, bring camera, paints and brushes, etc. Uh, book and document my work. Um, may need camera with book. Go to Calgary, Kelowna, Victoria. Need passport. Teeth fixed, glasses. Must finish trash whatever that is. We're all tired and grumpy, so I'm happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, half an hour from home, their home. In pencil, I miss Coy and Janelle already. So I don't know what that means. And here we see this page uh, contains two records on the same place one in yellow and one in pencil. We'll read the pencil as it stands out. Well, I decided to go tree planting. Save my money and leave the country. Maybe the kids, sure, well, that uh, uh, we visit in Holland uh, wanted um, anyhow Land of Rembrandt, Van Gogh's from thereabouts too. A man just called looking for attention, been drinking. Old man just called looking for attention, been drinking. One of the reasons I am leaving the country. Three of the reasons, anyhow. One, old man, I love him, but he's too, too much. Two, uh, drinking. Um, his and three, mine. Another reason is for the girls. They've hurt me. I let them down. It's just wrong. I should have had my head examined befriending such young girls. Hope some of them got something good out of me. I really, really do. I'm now more fucking stressed and distressed than moments ago. I wanted to recap, begin writing. Bring, bring the phone. He's drunk. Been fighting with sister all day over nothing as usual. She's part of the problem, but he is too. Here in yellow, I'll try and read. It says, uh, My old man drives me nuts. And I can't read it. I'm losing eyesight, I reckon. <coughs> Here again, a multicolored page. <clears throat> a lot of different uh, um, fonts used. In fact, they began fitting as soon as they got home. He acted childish. She got stubborn. We're probably talking about Jay and Sherry. Sherry LaRock. Sherry LaRock was connived 
by my father into making some kind of crazy deal with Jason, weird dark, and it involved a house that he got stuck with by some of them art girls, Judy, for one. We've talked to her, I mentioned her before last, uh, when I mentioned uh, the uh, art people, that uh, she was one. And um, he got stuck with a house, and then the old man kind of helped him out. It, it became a real hell storm for that poor man, let me tell you. And I was a great demon in that unhappy event. Yet, I justified all my ignorant behavior towards him because of his ineptness and clumsiness of character around those young folks that were my friends. Um, those people were vulnerable and needed maturity, not immaturity from the adults in, the, in, in their days. And the greater majority of the folk I meet are ignorant children whom have yet to grow up, albeit them be um, parents themselves. I can't wait to escape. Now I've made my mind to go. I can't wait. His call just now has me all fucked up. I was trying to relax. I'm so stressed. I hate him for always invading and planning fucked up childish selfish mind games with me. Playing fucked up childish selfish mind games with me. Go tomorrow, he says. He always says, it's not a request. Call tomorrow. It's a demand. There's no way to talk to him. He can't change. I've got to escape. He'll demand I calling on a regular basis. And I had to, always, or else uh, say, like in uh, the mid-80s when I moved to, to Vancouver and lived in Chinatown, I always had to call for fear of an RCMP or a police knock at my door. And I smoked pot and it wasn't like today. Back then, if you had pot or the smell of pot in your room and the cops came in, you got into trouble, even if it was just a reefer. He'll demand I call in on a regular basis. Dot, 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 dot. Better not because I just don't want to do it. When you do something for someone, you don't hold it over them. He can't, but he does. I wanted to think on these pages of tomorrow, of the girls, not him. And that's overwritten with I hate this in blue. It's been an hour. I feel a wee bit better now. Let me tell you about my new sissy Sandra. She is sweet and innocent, a happy girl what sings Dutch songs, and always is getting lots of attention because she's so silly. Uh, she beat me lots of times, mostly in boxing gloves, but uh, bare fist too. <laughs> we were fooling, I reckon. <laughs> I kind of half ass remember that. <laughs> That's. I got uh, uh, Charity Horses. I wish I could see more of her and Martine. I got Charlie Horses. <laughs> I wish I could see more of her and Mar uh, Martine. Um, her sis. Uh, such lovely lassies. And they were. They were all, all, all really nice girls. The, uh, the Siemens Daughters. Saw Sarah B. too. She's getting hitched in Vegas soon. Kevin called last night. Was partying. Worked over 10 hours on a painting for Angel. Um, or the one she painted for me. I guess I painted over a painting for her. Uh, 
we had kind of a thing going where um, I, I I don't know we I tried to get a lot of attention out of her and she usually didn't like me because I didn't like a lot of her friends or or, or in, uh, silly ways that uh, young folk behave uh, even me when I was young um, I think I was any different that's probably why I opened my heart up to them. I'd, I'd been a street kid since I was uh, old enough to ride my bicycle downtown and uh, steal cigarettes. Spent yesterday with Calvin. Got $10 for moving boxes for Sherry's mom. Uh, went to Cal's to watch TV. Ate some soup and dogs. Uh, Dave's. Pat. Pat's place with Lyndon. Cafe Ultimate. Uh, bringing Spider Girl Terror a tiny town um, in there for Deanna. Deanna, that is the waitress that uh, inherited uh, both paintings uh, Spider Girl Terror of Tiny Town, a painting of uh, uh, Terra Novak, and uh, um, Girl with a small drum, that would be Jamie Parker. Again, something to look at. I've been uh, messing with these books, and as I don't care what happens to them anymore, being that they are going to hold me down when I'm homeless, so I'm just going to have to trash them, eh? The old man, I just fucked up my favorite painting. I've been working on it for two years. I painted Benny's, Betty's face all black. I don't feel happy. It was a painting of Betty Page. Um, afterwards, it was uh, more like a silhouette on a yellow background. Uh, Cherry won't even look at me. I've hurt them all so much, dumb girls. On the bright side, there is no bright side. I cannot get the thought out of my head, out of my mind, uh, that I really am uh, insane. Cheryl is interested in posing. I made a sketch, um, it says stay home Darcy, P.S. my dreams come true, <coughs> I feel like a traitor, it's all a mistake, there's no way to fix it, of all my fuck ups I hate this one worse, this is the one fuck up I never wanted, why not, I, I don't know what I'm talking about here, um, but you know, when you're dealing with young girls, and they're, they were 20 or 30 or more, uh, of course there's going to be a lot of freaking problems and heartache. I mean, they're girls. We didn't have much of a, a thing with uh, the boys at that time uh, having their minds full of transgender ideology because uh, they really didn't. It wasn't being stuffed into their thoughts, into their minds, into their dreams, into their imaginations. It, 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 uh, they were just good old natural Tom Sawyer Huck Finn boys, them park kids. This is stupid. I feel so fucking sick. I never hurt so many people at once. So many beautiful little girls. Of all the bad things I've done, this has got to be the worst. I'm so full of fucking evil. I hate myself. I'm so goddamn sorry. What have I done? Why do I feel like I just broke my favorite toy? As usual. Dunno. Dreams lately involve lots of people. Uh, some hints of subterranean levels. Perhaps this emotional... Um, Maelstorm storm here that we're talking of. Uh, who knows what it is about? Um, might involve uh, archetypes. I, I deal a great deal 
in my life with uh, social constraints and archetypical behavior on a higher conscience level. Um, again, we'll use the metaphor of driving into a city from the dark countryside wherewith the radio begins to sputter to life. Thence you see in the distance the, um, the beginnings of a light at the end of the road, which as you near uh, becometh more onto like, um, say a bowl of light. Uh, for you know that it has a city center and its exterior. Hence you draw closer and you become absorbed into the light and that bowl disappears as you become absorbed into the light and become part of the community again, having entered it from the dark world outside its light. That Doma light is also uh, full of sound. And like any barn or chicken coop, we all share that air. As we all share that air, so too do we share a um, collective consciousness wherein are the archetypes of human identity. And you could look at Jung and a whole bunch of that other uh, cultural Marxist and Fabian uh, uh, BS and uh, apply all that to the idea of um, well we'll turn to uh, Italy here where we see whole townships rising up and going again other whole townships uh, this being not so much because of any particular individual or way of life, but because of a class consciousness or a state consciousness of those city-states. And this is also very akin onto what it was like back in caveman days, where with the whole family uh, established the archetypes wherewith we are ruled in an unconscious state today by me God um, the little girl whom me God sendeth down you know during the night there was a thunderstorm and we all shivered in our cave afraid but a tree yonder got struck by lightning and is burning whom do you think goeth and uh, uh, getteth that brand the smallest and the weakest and the least able to uh, resist the uh, the coaxing of its fellows, its family. Hence, we call her Pandora. Uh, we won't deal much more with that now. The name Jenny in blue in a big heart. Went to the cafe, met with Kevin, maybe Gino, Kevin Gino, I don't know. Manda sat with us, says Duff, Chad, Mark G, Jason Dork came in, Tim, spent time with Cheryl, that was a pretty girl. Yeah, Cheryl was probably the most beautiful of all the young women of that, of, of, of this whole gen, the, the, this whole generation. Uh, her and the little Dumont girl, the little Dumont girl was also really, really incredibly beautiful. At least I thought so. Of all those girls, if I had pillowed with any of them, pillow fought, it would have been either of them, if not both, should that have been plausible. It says here the Steiner painting. I don't know what that is. Uh, Rudolf Steiner, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Andrew is going to buy, oh, a painting of the Etruscan woman. I did 
a whole series of paintings for Cafe Ultimate. There was several. Uh, they are in that book. Uh, that's that 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 will be trimmed, and that will be the uh, frontis piece of the book. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. I'm sorry. Not that it matters, eh? As only me and me are listening to this. <laughs> Had weird dreams last night. Lots of people. Three by three canvas today for the debutante. This is why I don't like Jason. It's because when the debutante was finished, I was incredibly drunk and a, a really a disgusting thing to look upon and that puke um, he, he wouldn't be a friend and he wouldn't say to me no let's not do that instead uh, I don't think he encouraged it but he put up no resistance and uh, was quick to assist that I taketh the painting to uh, Miss Kerr before her family moved where with uh, you know I would have I would have presented myself just lousily I seen photographs because the jackass took pictures all along the way and when I saw the pictures and saw what a state I was in, I, I really didn't like that gentleman at all thereafter ever again. Hence his name, Dork. Weird Dork. I mean, it would have been a total and utter embarrassment, not just to the little girl and her family, but to me as well. It was just an awful thing to do. Friends are supposed to back each other up. Jamie was in my dreams last night. I wonder how she'll react when she learns I'm leaving forever. Will she be happy? Maybe I shouldn't care. Wished I didn't love her. Seems kind of stupid now. A year and a half? She don't love me. My life sucks. First Jamie. And now I become a goddamn son of a bitch. KK. Why? Oh, <laughs> maybe that's what we're talking about. <laughs> what a sin. I let the young lady put her lips to touch my lips and uh, uh, she mentioned it to Janelle and Janelle mentioned it around and then there was the uh, the bus accident and she got hurt and I always felt kind of responsible for that. I should have maybe told KK no or maybe just stuck my tongue in her mouth. I don't know. That may have solved the whole thing, eh? Then we would have had our little secret... Uh, together and uh, none would have known about it but I would have truly been an asshole then wouldn't I because she was just a kid still maybe 16 I'll show you this because uh, I mean, some of these pages are kind of artsy to look at and yes, you're not um, being tricked here. That is written backwards. I uh, ruined the most important part of my life. I've lost some thing. Who in the hell knows what that word is, forwards or backwards. The love of someone, sweet little girl. Of course, it says here in big, I am insane. And I was insane, I reckon, but I was also an artist. And, you know, um, I don't regret not pillowing or playing pillow fight with them, with them girls. I could have. Uh, we could have had a lot of fun, which is why I chose the song I did for the beginning of this, uh, these videos. I, I chose that... Uh, that song was our theme song on purpose because that is what people thought of me. That I was some kind of a, 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 a wicked fucker um, with these children. 
but no. In fact, uh, the higher up the ladder you went, the dirtier you got. And I was, I uh, was wriggling in the muck like a worm then, still, weren't I? Of course, we see here that there is also a printed page. Um, why does life have to be so hard? Faust. Wish I weren't airborne. Job. Okay, let's read this printed page. Um, I am what I am, who cares or knows. John Clare. I am, yet what I am, who cares or knows. My friends forsake me like a memory lost. I am the self-consumer of my woes. They rise and vanish, an oblivious host. Shadows of life whose very soul is lost. And yet I am, I live, though I am tossed. Into the nothingness of scorn and noise, into the living sea of waking dream, where there is neither sense of life nor joys, but the huge shipwreck of my own esteem. All that's dear, even those I love the best, are strange, nay, they are stranger than the rest. I long for scenes where man has never trod, for scenes where woman never smiled or wept, there to abide with my Creator God, and sleep as I in childhood sweetly slept. Full of high thoughts unborn, so let me lie, the grass below, above, the vaulted sky. The rage that tears a man apart underlies this poem, written in a spell of lucidity in the asylum to which Clare was confined for the latter part of his life. It anticipates the startling way some of the emphasis of present psychiatry. Boo, psychiatry! More than protest, Although this is implied against the terrifying conditions of being shut away from the world and from his friends, which expresses the most loneliness of all, that of being shut away from himself, the shipwreck of my own esteem, and his anguished longing to get completely out of himself is not unrelated to deep sleep therapy, hypnotism, and other modern techniques. There has always been an uneasy awareness of connections between so-called madness and genius. Often it has taken on a protective color of scorn for the latter, as being outside the comfortable norm range of experience, as faith in the comforts of normalty wanes. Uh, one must uh, put no faith at all in psychiatry whatsoever and uh, the, the Hubbard's uh, group, the uh, Scientologists, are very keen on that as are the uh, Seventh-day Adventists, as I am. I do, on the other hand, hold psychology in a somewhat higher regard, um, yet it is wholly given over to the underlying constraint and construct of uh, sacred geometry. And the only thing wrong with sacred geometry is it was used to dispose us of everything we are. By them that um, hold the reins of power over us in this uh, modern day and age. Uh, wherewith um, uh, me call it these days the last days or the end times because um, know you full well that uh, a great and terrible deluge is washing or all uh, Western 
civilization and under its weight there will be a great collapse as the poorly made bricks that this Babylon Tower is erected upon uh, disintegrate in that muck uh, underlying the flood or in that muck made us up of um, that uh, deluge which uh, stir up the soil and thereby make us up say a uh, mud and the mud and the mortar become the same and hence the Babylonian Moloch will eventually fall but unfortunately with it will go electricity and with electricity of course we will be plunged again into darkness these are just thoughts called uh, Kate Davis McKenzie um, yesterday left a message dumbass uh, bureaucrat oh McKenzie Art Gallery called Kate Davis at the McKenzie Art Gallery yesterday and left a message dumbass bureaucrat didn't even bother to call me back noon walking um, call her moments of significance in Sask artists lives but starless night ain't good enough she's in the business of fucking artists over so to get ahead kiss that brown star eh yeah right uh, uh, fuck you so again starless night is the painting the kids uh, um, Jennifer Echo and Jamie made with me it was a five foot by eight foot canvas that we stretched on the wall in the studio uh, where the light from three different windows merged um, at the same place on the wall it was a lot of fun Jamie did an exceptional job of mixing the paint and had I been one of those um, Pinko artists I surely would have been allotted uh, um, a lot more attention, albeit I was even uh, um, abusing the young kids uh, that God put in my care through our meeting by chance. Um, I say God put in my care because I sure as hell didn't listen to any kind of a devil when it came to dealing with these young people. Uh, I gave them a lot of attention and I gave them a lot of space and room to grow as people, as young people, which uh, society didn't, which is why they were on the streets. Just talked to Theresa, got all that gossip, nothing I'm going to repeat right now, got hugs from uh, one of the gents and Lisa today at uh, La Café. Andrew and Roger and Scott sat with me. Those are just kids. Uh, except Andrew, he weren't no kid. He was something bad. Luke, Lyndon, Pat, and Melissa showed up later. <coughs> so these, these, uh, my brother and his, his, his fellowship, they were different than the street kids in so much as um, <coughs> um, they, they worked and labored and contributed to that element of the community whereas most of the kids that hung out with me were just uh, uh, street brats so even the older street brats because there were some older street brats and um, they formed a different clique within that uh, culture the the culture or the park culture in Saskatchewan or the underworld art culture going away back in time was always much more diverse and multicultural say than it was in the eastern cities or in the western cities because 
there were more folk in those bigger cities whereby as an example the punks were the punks and the punks hung out with the punks and the punks did not hang out with the mods or the the same can be said of the east but in the midwest there were smaller groups hence uh, the punks and the new waivers for example hanged out together with the university intellectuals so there was a real mix and that's that's how i got mixed up with the the young people involved in the punk scene to begin with me being one of the older of that generation of street kids and me being in the band me forming the band and me being a principal character of the band uh, wanting to become say a bar band yet the younger wanted to become an all ages gigs playing band which we eventually did and which caused me to lose interest in the group hence I ended up traveling to BC and gave up on that life Uh, Manda Bain uh, given uh, me tension, which is attention, which is nice considering the other girls, Tara, Jen G, Cherie, uh, they avoid me now. The Spider Girl, Tara of Tiny Town, was off the wall when I went in. Uh, thought it was Jen G, but it was Tara. Uh, told him take it down. I put it up. Tara is so fucking stupid it hurts. I don't want her friendship. It's too fickle, selfish. She's such a brat. Now, you saw a sketch of that uh, young girl, Tara, that I made the painting, Tara of Tiny Town. It, it, it wasn't that great a picture. Maybe that's why she wanted to take it down. It, not, not because, because it really, it incorporated the painting underneath and it kind of detracted and took away a little bit from Tara uh, or the image of Terra changing it slightly perhaps that's why perhaps she just didn't want any anything to do with me oh no it's you know one day these kids like me the next day they don't uh, I stuck it out with them though for the few that it mattered the most Koi said hey I usually get a hug bah damn it Bridget smiled she even talked to me wants me to mail her a postcard Gotta love that crazy kid. I told Jen and Lisa what happened. They still love me. I just gotta try harder. Not drink. Be better. Go to write charity off though. She's uh, uh, stupid. And she's dating Brad T. Uh, one of the older ones. Took my painting. Fra Giovanni Bernardone to Peter at the church. My fine is done. Now we know exactly where I am living. I am living in the Brownstone apartment in Cathedral area. Uh, it was a great apartment. One of the best places I've ever lived. Stole film from Safeway. 35 millimeter no doubt paid for my tobacco they didn't ring in my film so I just left with it unpaid for Scott is developing schizophrenia as I expected we talked about Andrew is keeping a weather eye out for Campbell uh, so that sweet boy don't turn into a fuck up but let me tell you, uh, Andrew, if he was keeping his eye out for him, it was probably for that sweet boy uh, to uh, 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 trip and fall out of his pants by accident. And I'm sure Mr. Andrew would have helped him uh, up. Um, uh, yeah. Been over a month since I hit hot bath water. Willie, that's the landlord. Always says, but I'm going to look at it tomorrow. I don't like Willie, really. too eccentric. Uh, he's the owner. He was an Asian man. Um, I think what it is is somehow I, I made him mad at me and then he just turned the, the hot water off or down uh, like he did with the Indian kids upstairs 
and they had their water turned off because their hot water turned off because they were visited by that um, group of toughs that came storming into the building <laughs> I told you about <laughs> for myself today I was honest with Jen and Lisa really really truthful Kevin Kevin some guy is out to get Nathan and the occupants or hell house because it's a drug house I guess orgies go on luck y'all Derek Nimitz told me someone had their room broken into and shit stolen um, Roger gave me some food a whole lot of sexual innuendo yesterday in the cafe um, a handcuffed girl uh, um, getting a massage I don't know what that is excuse me please I don't know what that is I am depressed can't even get a human response to the problem of placing starless night I was trying to find a home for that painting but now in Sizer's care um, they really should have been looked at by artists and given the appropriate uh, respect it deserved perhaps I should have tried to sell it to the city I am depressed can't even get a human response to the placing of starless night no hot bath to relax Jamie KK and the girls bah suicide seems likely but why why not just run away and explore homelessness, loneliness, poverty? I'm so angry at the world. Why do I feel sorrow at all? I'm not living in a fascist state or a war-torn country. I'm not starving or suffering. Met a man once, about 12 years ago, he lived in over 50 countries. I uh, claimed Canada to be the most bureaucratic of all those 50 countries. He had trained one of our Olympic teams and he was on the streets. I've met architects driving taxi cabs, I'm telling you. Life is so confusing. I really hate being alive. I'm thankful I ain't bred nobody. I can't wait to be dead, long dead and forever forgotten. To hell with it. Things to be happy about. One, family loves me, so do friends. Two, am talented will leave a legacy of art and writing called Brenna I'm gonna meet her for coffee at 4 p.m. tomorrow Susan called we talked for over two hours gonna meet her for coffee on Friday she'll call me Susan's Jen's mom Jen was a very troubled little girl who ended up in a lot of mischief with that old man, remember I punched him, or punched his car that is, and he tried to run me over? <laughs> um, Jamie was in second. Jamie, uh, okay, I don't know what that is, but we do have here something you'll like to, to know about. This be that uh, sonnet to Jamie remember we be, talked of it a little bit ago this be it and it appeared to be have finished a Jew devil girl and that be the name of that painting it slipped my mind devil girl with a small drum angel you make me so crazy insane I have to go away now for error and error and hope to ne'er see nor hear O thee again, for you've consumed my soul. It's just not fair. 
In evil ice blue eyes I do burn. A twisted smile ist the dagger ripping my flesh. And oh, sorely dost that bitter wound hurt. I'm left a yearning for an end to my breath. Goodbye, sweet chaos. Oh, you breaking old hearts. I'm going to try and forget ere knowing you. For ere a memory of thee pains me to tears. What hurts? You loved me true. Please remember in with years that pass that you'll always be a heavenly last. And this one signed trash. Oh, dang it. Well, those, that's nothing. That's, we looked at that. That's just a bunch of garbage and collage material, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe I'll get to make a nice big collage of what I don't throw away of these pages. The, uh... Now... When I was yet young, I still had a great deal of respect for the Cenotaph and what it stood for. Never once, as a street kid from the earliest age, did I not uh, pay my respects to those men uh, whose memory was expressed therein the erection of those uh, uh, memorials in Saskatoon and Regina. Moreover, I never left a fallen poppy lay, but picked all up. In the end, those all I left in the park in Regina one day as a act of protest against the rude and violent treatment I received by the police in that city, them beating me to death and leaving me dead in an alley wherewith I met our sacred Blue Ever Virgin. Uh, she sendeth me back with a message. Uh, or telling me to uh, walk like a man. Whatever that means. Met Brenna at Cafe Ultimate. Janelle kind of played strange, distant. Um, what a shock. I can't believe it. On the other hand, it's not so uh, coy. She's willing to... Uh, give me a chance when I said I wish to talk about the rumors. She was very interested. I'm so happy. Um, I'll be very honest and truthful and answer any and all questions and leave myself at their mercy. I'm going to fix my mistake and give these sweet children power back. The power I stole from them in my insanity and I hope they understand. I'm, I'm not the asshole Gen G is making me out to be. Her, Tara, and Chera are teeny little bitches, but hey, little girls are cute no matter what. If they want to be bitches, then fuck them. Look at Tara, barely 15 and a full-fledged nice little girl. I tried to save her from herself, but she wants to be a party girl. Uh, Cherry, not as sweet as she makes out. A user. Um, if hurt left in her, I mean hurting others, uh, called last night, told me of her new lies. Um, currently uh, telling people she's having somebody's baby. 
he ain't as nice as I thought, but I don't think I'd be saying anything like you're having somebody's baby. There's something uh, miss that ain't written proper here. I'm, it's uh, like a real mess again. I think them girls, anyway shit happens, I'm glad to see where the bear shit in the buckwheat. I'm rotten from the inside out, rotten to the core, a bad apple, spoiler of the barrel. I'm going, going insane, criminally disturbed, emotionally deranged. I'm insane, deranged. Um, a message to myself. I found two purple roses with three red bulbs and a packet full of petals. That's the, that was one some of the lyrics from one of the punk songs. Uh, criminally insane, mostly disturbed, mentally deranged. Um, I was born in one mass grave. I must live in one mass grave. I will die in one mass grave. One mass grave growing. One mass grave dying. One mass grave writhing. One mass grave. We all live in one mass grave, one mass grave, one mass grave. We all die in one mass grave. Whatever, I forget. I've never been a dead body before. I wonder, have I ever been alive? If I am, is this where I want to be? If not, where am I? I'm alone in another room. Hit me now. Closing buzzed mine, eyes shut for sleep, tired in sore blackness, then a white spark and fireworks flicker, a flame bursting into being, burning and extinguishing darkness, silence again, such a vivid vision. Brennan and a friend, shopping at the Sally Ann, got some pants free and three shirts, Brenna and another friend, girls talking about sex. Melissa, Pat, Luke, Lyndon, all going into the movie The Getaway. Uh, today I was working on a painting of Louis Riel on trial. Um, I was painting uh, on Deb. We mentioned that. That was the Le Debutante. Remember I just told you about how that dork took me there in a, in a state of uh, disgrace to deposit that painting in their porch for that girl? If it was even the right house, I left it out. Also painting a cartoon study of the decision. I worked on some paperwork, Teresa called. Uh, Anne Cote and Martin Cote called. I had uh, a couple of crazy days. Stuffed in here be... Uh, another printed page. Um, with some sonnets on it by Henry Constable and Nicholas Breton. The paradoxes of love are convincing, enumerated here to make balanced rhetoric of contrast. Almost continually exiled in France because of his Catholicism, Constable is another participant in the Elizabethan Vogue for sonnet sequences is Diana being published in 1592. Needs must I leave, and yet needs must I love, Henry Constable. Needs must I leave, and yet needs must I love, in vain my wit doth tell in verse my woe, despair in me, disdain in thee doth show. How by my wit I do folly prove, All this my heart from love can never move, Love is not in my heart, no, lady, no, My heart is love itself, till I forego, My heart I never can love remove, How then can I leave love, I do intend, Not to crave grace, but yet to wish it still. Not to praise thee, but beauty to commend, And so, by beauty's praise, praise thee I will. 
for my heart's love, love not in me, so beauty thou, beauty is not in thee. Constable's style of balanced phrases uh, pushed further into this sonnet uh, at its two peaks of expression, love is not in my heart, no lady no, my heart is love itself, and so beauty thou, beauty is not in thee. The two hyperboles gain force of conviction by being close to denial, as which shines in contrast to black. by Nicholas Breton. I would thou wert not fair or I were wise. I would thou wert not fair or I were wise. I would thou hadst no face or I no eyes. I would thou wert not wise or I not fond or thou not free or I not so in bond. And we've lost the rest of that poem. Um, it's difficult to tell in many of Shakespeare's sonnets whether they are addressed uh, to his friend or his mistress. On various occasions both offend him, sometimes with each other. Sonnet uh, CXX uh, might be to either. Fitz seems to fit Mary Fitton, maid of honor to Queen Elizabeth, and sometimes identified as the Dark Lady. This is a game any number can play. In either case, how lovingly the sonnet says more than, since you were unkind to me, you should forgive my unkindness. Shakespeare goes beyond simple justice to a delicate balance of feeling. Remembering my own sorrow, I should have realized the extent of yours. This, uh, with a pinch of salt, is in the wound. The humble salve that fits wounded bosoms may be related uh, to the expression to eat humble pie. Originally, humble pie it uh, refers in English uh, to a dish served to hunters of umbles or numbles, the lesser parts of, uh, uh, including the heart. A salve made for the wounded deer would not wound the heart. So again, we return once more to Henry Constable, to live in hell and heaven to behold. To live in hell and heaven to behold, to welcome life and die a living death, to sweat with heat and yet be freezing cold, to grasp at stars and lie the earth beneath, to tread a maze that never shall end, to burn in sighs, to strive in daily tears, to climb a hill and never to descend, giants to kill, and quake at childish fears. To pine for food, and watch the Hesperian tree, to thirst for drink, and nectar still to draw. To live accursed, who men hold blessed to be, and weep those wrongs which never creatures saw. If this be love, and love in these be founded, my heart is love, for these in it are grounded. The paradoxes of love are convincingly enumerated here to make a balanced rhetoric of contrast. Almost continually exiled in France because of his Catholicism, Constable is another early participant in the Elizabethan vogue for sonnet sequences. Perhaps we'll call it there today um, these next few pages are kind of messed up I think that's a sticker from 1995 
So, um, yeah, we're going to call it there at that today and deal with this uh, again later. Um, I love you all. God bless.